discovered glosses. Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. I wasn't sure if I should still make this video since we are already halfway through January in 2021, but I decided that I like watching these videos and I feel like they can be helpful. So today I'm going to be showing you guys what my favorite makeup products were for the year 2020. Some of them were released last year and some of them I have just now discovered, but I can't wait to share with you guys what I personally think was the best makeup of 2020. Starting with foundations, since that is the base, both of these foundations were launched this year and they are just top notch to me. We have the Rare Beauty Liquid Touch Foundation. I have mine in the shade 130N and the reason I'm putting this in this video is because I feel like this foundation makes my skin look so incredibly flawless but with also feeling very lightweight on my skin and I feel like when I wear this I just love the way my base makeup looks. I love the way this blends on my skin effortlessly and I also love Selena Gomez so of course I am a big fan of Rare Beauty. And yeah, this has just definitely been one of my favorite foundations. The next one has actually become my new favorite foundation of all time. And it is the Morphe 2 Hint Hint Skin Tint. I have mine in the shade Hint of Marshmallow. And this right here, this is what a skin tint slash BB cream, CC cream, tinted moisturizer, this is what it should be. So this is not only in gorgeous packaging, I love the packaging, it's so aesthetically pleasing to me. It has a little uh, dropper for the foundation. I love the formula of this. It is very thin, but it blends on your skin and just really evens out your skin tone and makes your skin look so dewy and healthy. And I feel like my skin just looks amazingly healthy every time I wear this. Therefore, becoming my new favorite foundation slash skin tint, and you can apply as little or as much as you want. The more you apply, the more coverage you get. I usually try to apply slightly less than what I would normally apply for a regular foundation. That way I can get a slightly more sheer look, but the coverage can be incredible with this. I just like to even out my skin tone and then add some concealer and that's... I'm ready to go. I wear it a lot, so I thought I would wear the Rare Beauty one because I wear this one way more. This is just my go-to these days. For concealer, I can't believe I haven't even had this for a year yet. It is the ELF Hydrating Camo Concealer. I can't even believe. I don't even think this has been out for a year. It's very close to a year because I'm pretty sure I bought this when it came out and that was about 11 months ago. So... Here we are with the ELF Hydrating Camo Concealer. As you guys can probably tell, mine is almost empty. This concealer was such a game changer for me. I feel like this con I feel like the ELF Camo Concealers were like the next biggest concealer after the Tarte Shape Tape. I mean, I feel like these are like the biggest ones that are being talked about. And I used to have the original, the 16 hour wear, and that one's good. I liked it. I definitely had mine in too light of a shade, but this hydrating camo concealer, this tops every other concealer I've ever tried, ever. I don't think I will love a concealer the way I love the I Love Hydrating Camo Concealer. This concealer has changed my life. It is beautiful. It is full coverage. It's hydrating. It's dewy. I genuinely can't even imagine liking a concealer as much as I like this one. I have mine in the shade Fair Warm, in case you are wondering. And I have already bought a second one, just in case this one runs out. I mean, we're getting very close. There's still a lot of product. And considering I've been using this almost daily for the last year, it does have a lot of product. It's affordable. You honestly, you can't really go wrong with this concealer. Now, this product was in my last video. I wasn't gonna put it in here, but then I feel like I should because since I started YouTube, this is the first thing that I have hit pan on and it is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I have mine in the Light Bronzer and all of these products so far I am wearing. I'm not wearing the Morphe foundation, but I am wearing all the other products on me. There's what it looks like. There is my itty bitty little bit of pan. And honestly, I just felt like I should mention this again. 
because I know it's kind of a cult classic. I know it's kind of a cult favorite in the beauty community, but I genuinely could not find a bronzer that I loved as much as this one in an entire year. This was my favorite bronzer of 2019. It's my favorite bronzer of 2020, and I'm kind of curious if it's going to be my favorite bronzer of 2021. I guess we'll find out. And my battery's about to die, so I guess I'll be right back. So on to more cheek products. There is a kind of blush that I discovered this year, and I love it. I need to get more shades. I hope that maybe they'll come out with more shades. I'm not sure how new these are, but they are the J Cat Beauty Blush Mallows. I love these. I really, really do. They are so cute. I have the shade Cherry Limeade, and I also have the shade Dolly Peachy. I love these. They're kind of like a cream to powder sort of feeling. Like, they are powders, but they're like very creamy powders. I know they both look very bright and intimidating, but I am wearing Dolly Peachy on my cheeks right now, and I feel like it's not super intense once you blend it out. Here is what they look like. They are very bright and vibrant, but they are so beautiful and the formula is so unique. They're very satiny because they are so creamy. They're pretty much a cream, but then when you apply them, they apply like a powder. They're so unique and they're also so affordable. They apply beautifully over just your base, your foundation, your concealer, but they also apply nicely over powders as well since they are sort of a cream to powder. So yeah, I just, I love them. I'm glad I discovered them and I would like to get more shades. So I bought this highlighter at the tail end of 2019. It obviously did not make it into my best of 2019 because I just gotten it and barely tried it out. But now I've been using it all year long. It has truly become one of my favorite highlighters ever. And it is the ELF Glow Gleam Beam Palette. This palette is absolutely stunning. Now, I typically only use this shade right here. There is that shade. It is blinding. That is the shade that I have on my cheeks today. But I occasionally also wear this one right here, which is just the shimmer. This palette is affordable and it also has a nice selection for different skin tones. There's really only three that I can use, but I've gotten so much use out of this palette already this last year. I use this shade right here all the time. Highly recommend if you guys haven't tried one of these highlighter palettes, definitely check it out. They do have them in two shades. They have, this is the lighter one, so sort of light to medium, and then they have a medium to dark for darker skin tones. 2020 was a big year for eyebrows for me. Um, I went from having the blocky Insta brows all the time to actually learning how to do fluffier, more natural looking brows. And that is because of the ELF Instant Lift Brow Pencil. I have very bare brows. They're very sparse. I don't have a lot of brow hairs and the ones I do have are not very dark. So without brow products, I would just look a little weird. I would look like I didn't really have eyebrows and I don't really want that. Mid 2020, I was using pomades all the time and I still love a good pomade. I love a good bold insta brow sometimes still. But now for everyday use, I use this. It's so easy to use. It's double ended. It's only $2. On one end you have this tiny little nub. And what I like to do is I like to draw the outline of the bottom of my eyebrow and then I kind of flick upwards. It's also nice. It has a little spoolie on the other end and then you can just you know, while you're doing your brows, you can really work in the product there. And it's double-ended and it's only $2. And I've been using it daily and it seems to have quite a bit of product in it considering I thought I was going to go through this really fast. I think I've been using this for the last six or seven months, maybe seven months. And of course I don't do my makeup every single day, but when I do my makeup, I almost always use this. So... Yeah, I really like it. I'm really glad that I discovered how to do more natural feathery looking brows. That was sort of a huge thing for me last year and I'm so glad that I did. I highly recommend this. I can't believe it took me however many years this has been out for me to discover this product, but if you haven't tried it already, you definitely should. The mascara I want to talk about is kind of cheating. I did only get this recently. You guys probably just watched my review of this product. 
and it's the Revlon Big Bad Lash Mascara. So the reason I'm putting this in this video is because I have been thinking that the reason my lashes don't look that great with just mascara is because my lashes are kind of short and they kind of droop a little bit. Well, it turns out I just really didn't have the right mascara because once I tried this, I have not worn lashes since I've been wearing this because I love it so much. I don't feel like I need lashes near as often as I used to think I did. Now I feel like as long as I'm doing a pretty simple eye look or, you know, no eye look at all, I can get away with just using this. Now don't get me wrong, I still love a good lash, but I love that I found a mascara that is actually going to do something for my lashes. And it's kind of neat. One, I love the packaging, this bold red, like big packaging. I love it. But I also love the fact that the wand is double-sided. So you have this sort of hourglass-shaped side, but then if you turn it, it's flat. And that is so nice. I like to start with the hourglass shape and just kind of wiggle it on my lashes a little bit. And then I like to turn it to that flat side for the second coat. And that second coat, I really run it in there and wiggle it around. I think that's such a neat idea to have it be double-sided like that because I feel like it makes it so much easier for me to do my lashes and they look amazing. This one doesn't seem to be too watery, which I love because I feel like when mascaras are too watery, they tend to smudge and flick onto your face a lot easier than ones that kind of feel more like clayish texture. This supposedly is also a lash tint and slowly tints your lashes. I haven't really tested that out too much because I haven't been using it every day like I would like to. I have a bunch of other mascaras that I need to also use, but this is definitely my number one mascara now. So I feel like the eyeshadow palette of the year for me was definitely the Morphe 35i Icy Fantasy palette. I can't even express to you guys how much I love this palette, how much I've used this palette in the last year. I feel like it doesn't look like a lot on camera, honestly, but this palette is so beautiful. And I've been so into pastels this last year, and I feel like that palette has just really helped my creativity with eyeshadow looks. I've done so many pastel looks. I used this palette today to do my eyes. I feel like it turned out really, really well. I also used the Glisten Cosmetics Split Liners in Split Peas and Slushy. I used both of the pastel ones, and I feel like it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love how it turned out today. I love that palette. I use it all the time. It is definitely one of my absolute favorite palettes, and I'm so glad that I discovered it. I'm so glad that I bought it. Now I have a few lip products that I want to talk about. 2020 was definitely the year that I discovered glosses. I know that lip glosses have been around forever, but I didn't realize that I liked them on me until last year. Specifically when I found the NYX Butter Gloss in Creme Brulee. This is sort of a nudie peach one and I absolutely love it. It is my perfect sort of nude gloss. It's what I'm wearing today. Not only does it smell amazing and looks amazing, it is not tacky on the lips at all. Like, it's not tacky. It's so buttery smooth and I feel like it makes my lips look so juicy and plumped and I love it so much. In 2019, my favorite lip combo was the Kylie Cosmetics Dulce K Lip Liner and the NYX Lace Detail Lip Lingerie. I still love that as my favorite matte lip combo, but my favorite glossy combo, the same liner, but with this because it's beautiful. I definitely need to get some more butter glosses in different colors. I feel like it just goes so well with everything and it's pretty much my perfect nude lip gloss. So definitely check out the NYX Butter Glosses. They have a bunch of like more nudie shades and you can probably find your perfect nude gloss there. The next two are actually red lipsticks. So I don't wear a ton of red lipsticks or I kind of went through a phase where I wore red lipsticks all the time a couple years ago. But since starting my channel, I haven't worn red lipsticks a lot until I found these two. The first one being the Revlon Super Lustrous Matte Lipstick in On Fire. It is a super bright red, and I love the packaging. 
It's just this bold, beautiful, orangey red. I love the way it looks on my lips. It's just so bright and stunning. Here is what the lipstick looks like. This is honestly such a beautiful red for me, I feel like. It's such a bold, bright red, but it's also extremely comfortable to wear on my lips. So creamy and the pigmentation is incredible. I actually found this because of Soap Does Life and Emma's Rectangle. They did like an ad with Revlon and they found this red shade and I was like, oh my goodness, immediately I need to get that. It's gorgeous. So if you're looking for a really bold, bright, orangey red, I highly recommend that lipstick. Now if you're looking for a soft, more muted pinky red, I have the thing for you. This is the Essence Color Boost Matte About Matte lipstick in the shade Seeing Red. Now this one is definitely a much more toned down muted pink-ish red but I still feel like it looks amazing on me and it kind of gives me more like, I don't know, it kind of gives me more like Taylor Swift vibes. Like just a very soft, subtle, pinky red. If you guys can tell the difference, like this one's way more of like a pinky undertone and this one's way more of like a fiery orange undertone. But either way, between these two red lipsticks, I've been wearing red lipstick a lot more than I used to. And I'm definitely happy for that. I love a red lip now and I kind of do them pretty often it seems like. Alright, I think that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you. I would like to know what your guys' favorite products were of 2020, whether they launched in 2020 or you discovered them for the first time in 2020. I would just really like to know and maybe I'll check them out. And if you stayed until the end, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post new videos every single Saturday and I'll see you guys next Saturday. Bye!